And by Protocase, proud title partner of the 2023 Protocase U Sports Women's Basketball Final 8. Le partenaire en titre de l'Ultime 8 U Sport 2023. Welcome to the 2023 Protocase U Sports Women's Basketball Championships presented by Bell. Here in CBU, Cape Breton University in Sydney, Nova Scotia for this third quarter final of the day on CBC Sports featuring the number five seed Calgary Dinos and the number four seed and AUS champion St. Mary's Huskies. So Alex, if it's anything like our first two games today, uh, both went down to the wire, one to overtime with Queens along with Alberta moving on to semifinal Saturday. This should be a dandy as well. Yeah, like you say, two exciting games to get us going here this weekend. No reason to think this game, the 4-5 matchup, always tightly contested. No reason to think this one won't be another burn burner down the stretch. The Dinos come in off an impressive playoff run. They were third in Canada West, 13-7 and seven in the regular season. But with an upset of Regina, made their way to the conference final that punched their ticket to Nationals. They dropped the championship game by 11 to a team we just saw previously, uh, the Alberta Pandas. But again, they earned their way into the dance here along with Alberta representing Canada West. And the St. Mary's Huskies, winners of the AUS, finished second in the regular season and were able to defeat the Acadia Axe women in the championship game and they come in on a roll as well. So the winner of this one will play the winner of our second semifinal here this evening. The host team, the number eight, Cape Breton University Capers and the number one Carlton Ravens. And now, and now we'll join into the starting lineups for both teams. A third year forward from Calgary, Alberta, number zero, Maya Proctor. A fifth year guard from Hamilton, Ontario, double zero, Mackenzie Turchich. A second year guard from Edmonton, Alberta, number three, Annecy Palmer. A second year guard from Rimouski, Quebec. Number 11, Emily Collin. And a second year guard from Edinburgh, UK. Number 12, Pollyanna Story. Head coach of the Dinos is Damian Jennings. Now time to meet the starting lineup for the St. Mary's Huskies. A third year guard from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Number eight, Clara Gascoigne. A fourth year guard from Brantford, Ontario. Number nine, Alina McMillan. A fifth year forward from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Number 13, Sophia Whitmire. A third year forward from Fredericton, New Brunswick. Number 14, Lucy Beaumont. And a third year guard from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Number 22, Aki Kobayashi. Head coach of the Huskies is Scott Monroe. Your officials for
Welcome back to CBC Sports for this matchup between the Dinos and the Huskies, the 4-5 matchup here in our national championship tournament. The winner moves on the semifinal Saturday. The loser will play in the consolation round tomorrow. So obviously a lot on the line to say the leaks, Alex. Goes without saying a big matchup here against two evenly matched clubs. Tip is won by the Huskies. It's Kobayashi controlling. Gets it over to McMillan. She finds Gascoigne. Kobayashi now. Into the lane, puts it up left hand, won't go off glass. Story. Pull-up jumper, no good. McMillan goes the other way. It's Beaumont getting the rim and getting the first bucket of the game. Great power move there by Beaumont off the feed from a line to McMillan. And that breaks the seal on the scoring here at Sullivan Fieldhouse. And there's a big play by the defensive player of the year in the AUS, Kel Eric Gascoigne. Skip pass, Beaumont with the kiss, doesn't go down. And a big rebound there by Story. Got a foul call here going against Kobayashi. First personal foul. Here's McMillan. Again finding Beaumont. Muscles it up and in for our first points. Turnover created by the Huskies. Kobayashi drives, right hand, won't go. Husky bench wanted the foul. They thought Anasi Palmer raked the arm of Kobayashi. Pretty footwork there from Palmer getting to the rim. Kobayashi going to slow the pace for St. Mary's. As we saw in our first two quarterfinal matchups, both teams take a, a little bit on this stage. No doubt there's nervousness to settle in. Corner three, no good there from Widmeyer. Yes. Widmeyer almost compounded. Her miss there with taking a foul in the backcourt. There wasn't a call, but there once you don't want to take. Here's that dish and great footwork by Palmer. McMillan controlling. Beaumont gets it over to Gascoigne. Swing it, Widmeyer. McMillan drives, floater, short. And we got an inadvertent reset there, so I think we'll get a stoppage. And we'll get some time, I think, put back on, but it would be, as you said, shouldn't have been a, a new clock. Scott Monroe's already into this one. Head coach, veteran of St. Mary's on a couple of calls, because now he calls out a set for his team off the baseline here. Two seconds on the shot clock. Pretty much a catch and shoot if Kobayashi can get it in. Gascoigne got it away and she drained the three. 
An off-balance acrobatic shot there by the AUS Defensive Player of the Year, Claire Glass-Going. Yeah, that's, a, that's really a killer for Calgary. You play great defense for 23 and a half seconds, and then that tough floater from beyond the arc goes in for Gascoigne. Off the spin there, Emily Collin answers for Calgary. Gascoigne again. Gascoigne's a battler. And you never know a shot like that, that desperation three really will see it here. She gets it, has to make a juggle it a bit. It's even, it was a long two seconds if you're a Calgary fan. Just long enough if you're Clara Glass going as she misses strong on the first free throw. Again, the AUS Defensive Player of the Year. There's a good look at the veteran from Dartmouth. As she hits the second to give her team a two point edge, six to four, just under seven minutes remaining in the first quarter. A double dribble call here. Bringing it to two hands there was Gadich. Bayashi. Corner for McMillan. McMillan very much the star, straw, pardon me, that stirs the drink for the Huskies. There's Gascoigne again. Heavy on the left hand. Skip pass to the corner. It's Colin. Terpchurch can't get that one to fall. Widmeyer gets denied at the rim. Both teams going to their benches. See, look, as you said, Widmeyer denied there by Gacic. Open three there for Wade, Tatum Wade, the freshman. Actually, pardon me, Bobby Joe Colburn for three, the fifth year art student from Cranbrook, British Columbia, to give her team a seven to six lead. Corner three, no good from Gascoigne. Offensive rebound. Fawthorne taken by Beaumont with a jump ball. Beaumont between a pair of dinos there. Good work to corral it, but then got tied up. And here's that three-pointer by Bobby Joe Colburn. Nothing but net. Cone now driving, gets to the rim, can't finish. Offensive rebound again. Madison Landry able to get the second chance effort to go. Huskies are going to have to tighten up on the defensive glass here. Off the drive, the kiss on the reverse. Coming up empty was Widmeyer. I'm going to get a traveling violation. <laughs> Just about to say uh, getting away with one there maybe was Colburn, but official made the call. Nine to six here early, 424. Remaining again as with the first two matchup, low scoring first quarters. And for me, not surprising again, considering the whole contact situation. Again, on the big stage, big crowd, there are gonna be some early jitters. For G for three. Or Donaldson, pardon me, for three. Courtney Donaldson.
strong take. Once again, Madison Landry. Another one of the Calgary veterans from Prince George, British Columbia, another fifth year senior. Beaumont able to get to the rim again. Team starting to loosen up here a little bit, getting a little more flow. A little high low action with the two Calgary Bigs. And then on the reach in, it's going to be Donaldson. I think they may have called a jump ball there, actually. Yes, they did. I thought they might have gotten Donaldson on a reach. McMillan will control for the Huskies. She'll pull from deep. Little heavy, rebound, bobbled, and we're gonna have another jump ball. Good work there by both sides. Cone gets tied up. And that's Sarah 4G. Who I inadvertently called earlier when it was Donaldson on the three. She's in also coming in. Caitlin Power for the Huskies. So both teams have used their bench here in the opening quarter. Tied at 11. Cohen gets it on the wing. Can't find the rim on that attempt. Donaldson comes the other way. Skip to the corner. Extra pass up top to three. Off the march, follows her own rebound. Great hustle there from 4G. Two good looks there for the Huskies. One by 4G and one by McMillan. Behind the back pass. Powers unable to finish down low. Really alert play there by Power, though. Probably not expecting it around the back. Well, I guess maybe with McMillan knowing her game, but still good awareness there to be always ready to make the catch. Gascoigne, front rim. Into the teeth of the Husky defense, and they come away with it. Gascoigne. Tough pass there. McMillan. Into the corner. 4G3. No good. Fafor and taken by Cone. Cone travel, but she, you can see there, she has the second gear. And she was on the Husky defense quickly, but picked up the pivot foot. Kobayashi's back in. Again, like in our previous two games, scoring at a premium here in the first quarter. You have to wonder, teams, even though the St. Mary's and the Acadians have played here, again, a new he gets some practice time, but a new gym to shoot in during the game. Kobayashi gets it to Power. Nice return pass down low for Power. She can't finish. It look, looked like on both occasions, Power just couldn't get a good handle on it. She juggled it the first time, missed the layup, and then got fouled yeah, look, on the second attempt. But she didn't seem to get much mustard on the on either one of those shots. Yeah, it looked a little rushed there, especially on that second attempt. She knew the defender was coming. She had to get it up quickly, but she does draw the foul. Misses the first of two. There you have a good look at Caitlin Power. She hits the second. Giving her team a one-point lead. Turchich. 
Over for Palmer, back to Terpchich. Gets it out, mid-range jumper. Won't fall for Sakeva. Koibayashi attacks. Donaldson juggled it. Six seconds remaining. Off the bounce, now looking for a screen for power from long distance. Donaldson, front rim power, tried to corral the rebound. But the horn goes to end the nip and tuck first quarter, a low scoring one here at Sullivan Fieldhouse. Your score after the first quarter, St. Mary's 12, Calgary 11. You're watching the 2023 Proto K Shoe Sports Women's Basketball Championships presented by Bell on CBC Sports. from Boost Innovation is proud to bring you the 2023 U Sports Basketball Final Eight on CBC. This Canadian built military grade software provides guidance on eight performance mindset characteristics as well as knowledge of tactics and strategy in basketball. FLW Analytics proven technology is ready for its Canadian release. Learn more about the launch of FLW Analytics in Canada by visiting flwanalytics.com or scan the QR code on your screen. FLW Analytics, where champions go to improve their mindset. Our third quarter final today in day one of the 2023 Proto KSU Sports Women's Basketball Championships presented by Bell. 12 to 11 for St. Mary's as we get ready to start the second quarter. The winner of this matchup will make it to semifinal Saturday versus either the Carleton Ravens or the Cape Breton University Capers. Two teams have already punched their tickets to semifinal Saturday. The Queens Gales and the Alberta Pandas. And they'll play on Saturday. Nice box out there from Beaumont securing that board. Off the miss by Palmer. Skip pass, the three, Widmeyer won't go down. Widmeyer can hit that, but just and no team has really shot the three. Well, I think we could say that, make a blanket statement across the, the first three matchups. Especially this corner just underneath us here at Sullivan Fieldhouse has really been an Achilles heel, especially in our last game for the Acadia Axe women. They just couldn't hit anything from there as they coughed up a 13 point lead to the Pandas. Again, the Dinos dog it on the offensive boards. Kobayashi gets it up top. She finds Beaumont. Donaldson. Attacking, spinning. And she's going to get whistled for the travel. I was just, <laughs> you could see the official on the call from, I blo was blocked a little bit by our monitor here, but I thought it might be a foul before. And that was the right call, I believe. Damian Jennings goes to his bench. He's in his 11th season. Colin. Gets through the lane, nice pass down low. As 
Proctor's foul. Wow, was that ever a dandy pass, as you said, Alex, from Collin. She just zipped it on a rope of great hands. First free throw, no good there for Proctor. Second one finds its way through. Widmeyer now in the corner. Up top, Kobayashi. For Beaumont. Gascoigne driving. Kick, corner, Donaldson three. Again, can't find the range. Good hesitation move and transition there by Collin as she draws the foul. Collin, who just made that fabulous pass earlier to Proctor, took it herself, but this time, as you said, she kind of put it in neutral, stalled the St. Mary's defender, and then took it to the hoop hard. And there you have a good look at Collin. Hits her first. She's a sophomore from Ramuski, Quebec. So it's taking her basketball talents west to Alberta. Millen will check back into the game for the Huskies. So good rest there for McMillan. McMillan's a big game player, likes the spotlight, so expect her to start to exert herself. Kobayashi. Jumper won't drop, tipped out. Now Proctor the other way. Nice feed down low. Transition layup will go. Story getting that one. Great fast break transition basket there by Story off the feed for Proctor. Colin pulling up for three. She's blocked from behind. Calgary bench. On the foul call, but nothing there, says the officials, with Beaumont with the block from behind. Kobayashi. Skips it out, corner McMillan. Dishes over for Gascoigne, can't get that one to fall. Wow, both teams struggling a little bit here. Although Calgary's been able to Take a four point lead. St. Mary's is really the lid on the basket for sure at this moment. Nice feed for Kobayashi there in transition, cuts it to a two point lead. That's a game the Huskies like to play. They like to get out on the run. Kobayashi there with the good play on the defensive end. McMillan kicks it back out. Beaumont, three. Beaumont finally nails one for the Huskies. Five in a row for St. Mary's, and they're back up by one. Again, Kobayashi in the middle of things. The last three trips down the floor. Good perseverance there from Colin getting to the rim. McMillan. See if both teams could start to crank things up here a little bit. McMillan. Corner three, Widmeyer. That one goes down. Huskies Wh getting hot from long range. Back to back threes. You know what a shooter's confidence is like once you nail one or two. And that feeling starts to come and see if the Huskies can get that going. Gascoigne, there she is again, Widmeyer. I think we were seeing a timeout from uh, Calgary if that one would have went down. Both teams go to the bench. And again, both uh, 
plenty of depth on both sides. Donaldson will inbound here for the Huskies. McMillan. Gascoigne now, she sees a lane. And she'll draw the foul from behind the calls made. Landry. Gascoigne, who really came out flying in the first quarter at the line here. Again, the AUS Defensive Player of the Year. And certainly, as she's shown tonight, no slouch on the offensive end of the floor as she extends her team's lead to 22-18. Dinos now, Cone. Too long. So great defense there, causes a turnover by the Huskies. And just a reminder that the 2023 U Sports Women's Hockey Championships, set for Montreal, Quebec, will take place from March 16th to the 19th. You can catch all the action on cbcsports.ca or usports.ca. Step back three there is blocked. Cohen will come the other way. Looked like McMillan passed on the better look from the corner and dribbled herself into the defense. Pass coin. No hesitation, gets to the rim and finishes. Damian Jennings wants to talk it over. Dinos take a timeout. St. Mary's their biggest lead of the contest. Look at Clara Gascoigne. The Dartmouth Nova Scotia product has been leading the way for the Huskies and they lead by six. Both coaches now Getting a chance to chat with their charges. There's Damian Jennings. Pretty animated there. I think he say you always take the opportunity to reiterate things that the coaches could see from the bench and even other players, as you see Alina McMillan pointing out something to her coaches as they're in the huddle. Again, our third quarter final of opening day. Our first two semifinal berths go to the Alberta Pandas and the Queens Gales. They'll play on Saturday in semifinal number one. And semifinal number two, the winner of this matchup will tip off against the host Cape Breton University Capers or the Carlton Ravens. The long way to go tonight in this one, and then we have another one on tap. Yeah, different stuff for our Huskies able to connect from long range a few times. They've already attempted 16 shots from beyond the arc, compared to just three from Dinos, who've just connected on one of those. Beautiful feed there by Cone, found Proctor with the kiss. The cut at the four. Donaldson. Over to Forgy. Great hustle there. Can't change Forgy, Janet Owens. yes, great hustle. She did that earlier on one of her three points attempts, and uh, you don't see it as often. Kind of one of the old pillars of basketball. Follow your shot, and 4G has certainly done that here this evening. Cone, feeds it down low for Story, gets it to go with the left. Cone is a great facilitator. Great hands there, and using the left hand Story to cut it to two. Donaldson using the screen from Beaumont, gets it over McMillan. She's wide open for three. She's not gonna miss that one very often. No, and she can shoot it from deep. There's a line to McMillan. Shooter of her caliber, you can't leave her that wide open and in rhythm. 
as you said, Alex, that's just not that the Huskies are burning it up from three, but they've just connected on enough here in the last few minutes to take the lead, but there's a turnover by Forgy. So Colburn, the veteran, with the steal and hoop. Donaldson, Gascoigne's been aggressive. She gets it back down low, scoop, won't go. Rebound taken by Story. Under two minutes to play here in the first half. Three-point advantage for St. Mary's. Proctor over the story. They get it to Cone. St. Mary's really trying to keep Calgary at the paint as Cone gets the shooter's roll over McMillan. Scott Monroe wants to have a chat. Huskies take a timeout. Back down the one here, 27 to 26. And there's the good work by Cone over McMillan who defended her well, but she gets the shooter's roll. So Cone has been showing it both with her passing ability along with that shot there. Miriam Cone, a freshman from Edmonton, Alberta. So she along with a couple of the veterans like Colburn have Tried to lead the way here. And look at the Huskies huddle under the veteran Scott Monroe. As you said, right from our first game, Alex, the last couple of minutes of any of any quarter, especially before halftime and into the second half, are so big it could turn the momentum. So we'll see what happens here. You can't fall asleep in the latter stages of, of a quarter. Huskies up a point. And they'll inbound Gascoigne. It's really been stellar from the get-go for the Huskies. He's able to get it in for McMillan. Last coin. Kick, corner, Kobayashi. Gets it back to gas going. Six to shoot. She's stripped and it's taken away. Proctor now the other way for the Dinos. I think what the Dinos are starting to recognize with gas going is she's not as much of a threat with the jumper. She wants to get to the hoop. And that's what they saw there as they closed out on her and caused the turnover. Donaldson, nice feed down low for power, goes up and gets to. Way too easy on that one for power. If you're a Dino fan. Two for one opportunity here for the Dinos. Three off the mark. Rebound secured by Donaldson. Kobayashi now. Four second differential between game clock and shot clock. Donaldson for three. Can't find the bottom of the net. So we have a battle down low between Power and Sakova. It's going to be Power called. Here's Donaldson. Great move there. And finding Power was all alone with the kiss. So 12.3, plenty of time here for Calgary. I think they will hold for the last shot. They don't want to give St. Mary's another chance here. And the slow scoring grinder at Sullivan Fieldhouse, wide open at the buzzer. So a breakdown there by the Huskies. So the Dinos, a big hoop at the buzzer. Able to put it home there was Lily Pink. Proctor, wide open. And the score at the half, St. Mary's 29, Calgary 28 in this third national quarter final at Sullivan Fieldhouse at Sydney K. Breton.
So both teams now get a chance. Alex to head to the locker room, make some adjustments, and come out here with a chance to go to a national semifinal on the line in the third and fourth quarter. So we're gonna it's that step away. Again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. fans check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike team collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike team. two weeks. I think we can make this work. <laughs> Sick. This room's mine! Derek, something's wrong. Mom, Dad! They have cable internet. Everyone in the car. No! Once you're used to Bell Pure Fiber Internet, no! anything else is terrifying.
a one point halftime advantage for the St. Mary's Huskies out of Halifax over the Calgary Dinos. Leading the way for the Huskies is Clara Gascoigne with eight points, followed by Beaumont with seven. While it's Colin pacing the way for the Dinos. She's got eight of her own. Calgary's been able to do it on the inside, Alex, and it's been the outside for the Huskies as we look at some highlights here. Uh, it's not like the Huskies have ever been on fire from three, but they've hit enough that that's been the difference for them. But both teams obviously struggling a bit offensively, 29 to 28. Maybe like we did previously, we'll give credit to the defensive juggernauts. Strong defensive battle, that's right. Both teams have done well when they've gotten out in the break, as we saw in that dino basket. And then here, lovely lead pass by Widmeyer found Kobayashi. There's one of those long threes. A very disciplined first half there as well. Just 14 fouls for the Huskies and three for the Dinos. Alina McMillan's someone I'm going to keep my eye on for the Huskies. She's a clutch player. And I think if she had a great first half, there she is, Cone with the feed there to Proctor. So they're gonna be two key players here, I think in the second half for their respective teams. So again, the winner gets a trip to semifinal Saturday here at Sullivan Field, hosted Sydney K. Breton. The losing team will go to the consolation round tomorrow our first consolation matchup tomorrow will be the Montreal UQAM Citadin and the Acadia Axe women. And the second one again will be whoever comes out on the short end of this game and our nightcap featuring the hometown and host Cape Breton University Capers and the number one ranked Carlton Ravens. We'll take a little step away here for the third quarter, we'll be back for the start of the third quarter, pardon me. You're watching the 2023 Proto K U Sports Women's Basketball Championships presented by Bell on CBC Sports. Season. Catch the best in Atlantic University sport excitement at home or on the go with AUS TV. Soccer, rugby, football, volleyball, hockey, basketball, and more. Tune in at AUSTV.ca. All your favorite university teams showcasing their talents in one place. AUS TV, powered by Bell Alliant. They bring it to the court. They bring it to the field. They bring it to the ice. And now they bring it to you. Presented by Subway, the official fuel of Atlantic University sport. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. 
Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Welcome back to the 2023 Proto KSU Sports Women's Basketball National Championship presented by Bell on CBC Sports. And we'll look at our halftime scats here, Alex. Uh, field goal percentage kind of sticks out. Huskies really struggling from the field. Rebounds even, turnovers, many more for the Dinos, 13-8. Uh, so St. Mary's a good defensive team, but again, it goes back to, I think, 43% from Calgary. Not bad, actually. But very much like we spoke to before the break, uh, inside work for the Dinos, and St. Mary's able to a little bit get that three-point game going late in the second quarter. And St. Mary's is getting so many more shots up than the Dinos. They already have nine more attempts, and... 14 more attempts from long range. So that, that three-point percentage might be a little misleading. It looks really close there, but just the one make from the Dinos from deep, five for the Huskies. And it doesn't seem to be, and who knows, from game to game, uh, it might not be a huge tool in the toolbox for the Dinos, uh, but uh, more interior work. But uh, we'll see what happens here, hopefully. A little more pep offensively for both sides, but it's a good battle here, just like we were looking for, like we got in our first two games, one to overtime and one down the really. We didn't know the winner until eight seconds remaining when uh, the Pandas went up four on the on the Axe women that we could really say this one's a done deal. So hopefully the same sort of scenario here, as again, a lot on the line, a trip to the semifinal Saturday here at Sullivan Fieldhouse in Sydney. Try to say that 10 times fast. And again, the consolation round for the team that drops this one, and they'll be back in action tomorrow. First game tomorrow will take place at 6 p.m. With the loser of this game will be playing at 8 in the second matchup. The 2023 Cavendish Farms University Cup is coming up March 16th and the 19th in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. So all the top teams in the nation will gather to determine the national champion. You can see it all on cbcsports.ca or usports.ca. So always a great tournament that one is, Alex, and uh, UMB and St. Mary's of the AUS in that tournament, UMB the top team in the nation. And always uh, Alberta, yeah, some of the common names, of course, the host UPEI Panthers will be there as well. And I know they'll put on a good show for the nation at the Cavendish Cup next weekend. Yeah, definitely some high quality hockey. It's always fun to watch. Underway here, just a reminder, the Dinos in their black and red, Huskies in their white and maroon. Beaumont comes out aggressively to start the second half. Colin attacking. 
Thought she was going to get away with the travel, but she doesn't. Good whistle there for the official. And that's one thing thus far, and not that we're here to, to have a referendum on that, but through two and a half games, uh, you just don't want the officiating to become a determining factor, and we, it hasn't been so. So the quality's been there, and that's no surprise considering the best of the best get the assignments here at Nationals. Terpchik now quickly in transition. Palmer unable to finish on that attempt. I thought that was a tough pass. Jurcic to Palmer. Didn't get her in a good spot to attack. She had a reload. Gamble doesn't pay off there for Terpchic. As Gascoigne gets right down the lane but can't finish. Looked like almost a double dribble there by Gascoigne as she made her drive to the hoop. Lob down low for Proctor, just out of her reach. Gascoigne has certainly not been shy, and which it bodes well for the Huskies. She's been, and she knows her game. It's to the hoop. She's strong to the hoop, strong underneath, and aggressive, and that's translated well for her thus far. Kobayashi now for the Huskies. Gets to Widmeyer. Gascoigne. Back to Kobayashi using the screen. Gascoigne turns the corner. There's going to be a foul call. goes against Colin. McMillan gets a block from behind. A little trouble here. Baseline on the inbound the Huskies have had. Cutting it close, that's for sure. Kobayashi with five. Gets it off the glass for two. And that's a five-point St. Mary's lead now. A lot of pressure there from Kobayashi. It looked like Palmer wanted the foul call. She didn't get it. Huskies go the other way. Strong drive to the basket there by Widmeyer. And gets the bank. All of a sudden, seven-point Huskies lead. All oh, lovely move there on the scoop by Palmer. It's going to be a reach and foul called against Turkic. May seem like an innocuous call, but they're ones that, as you see, the drive by Widmeyer against Proctor. A good battle there and a good finish. Calgary putting some full court heat on there, but McMillan breaks it easily. She finds gas going, they swing it, Widmeyer. Widmeyer has that long stride, and she swoops in with the left hand, draws the foul, so Widmeyer. Foul on Coburn. Here it is, the drive and the scoop. And a great play by Palmer. Widmeyer now. Chance to extend the Huskies lead. Tries to feed it down low to go out of bounds. Dinos retain possession. Donaldson will come in for Kobayashi. They 
just do get it in. Both teams having trouble on the inbound baseline. Corner three, that one goes down. Pollyanna Story. I think that's the first three of the night for the Dinos. Or second, they were 25%, weren't they? Yes, in the second one for four in the first half. Story from the corner. Oh, they're going to say Beaumont get hit. It's caused the cop up. Dinos are happy with that. Proctor. Great feed to the corner. That's where Pollyanna Story drains the three. So much good could happen from taking it to the basket. An obvious tenant of the game is Gascoigne in a battle. Kicks it out. Nice move here from Beaumont. Beaumont, I think, will be with the travel. Yes. Once you. Once you make that spin, it's always dangerous. Cone back in. She was a spark plug in the first half for the Dinos. She has it in the corner. They're working around. Landry. Has to force it up. She gets it to go. Wow, Landry. And I thought Landry should have gotten it earlier in the post from Cone. They had the seal, and then it got them down late in the shot clock, but Landry able to bail her team out. And here she is, series of moves, and then hits over Donaldson. It looks like three. Three free throws. I'll get it out at some point coming up for Widmeyer. That's always a tough one. Proctor. See if Widmeyer can capitalize. She hits the first. Second one dropped as well. The Widmeyer's come out aggressively here in the third quarter. Both teams seem to be a little sharper offensively. A perfect three for three at the line for Widmeyer. Four point Husky lead, 540 left in the third. Nice backdoor pass. Gonna say Donaldson fouled Landry who juggled it. So we'll see another baseline set. Both teams have had trouble inbounding from the baseline. We'll see someone, see who actually Damian Jennings wants to talk it over here. With his team down four in the third quarter. Again, a spot in semifinal Saturday here in Sydney on the line. And a chance at the ba bronze baby. And the crowd starting to file in. There have been good crowds all day, Alex, since really our first tip off. A lot of school kids, 1130 game this morning. And they saw a good one, the overtime win for Queens over the Caravan of Montreal. And then our second one, a four point win for Alberta over Acadia. And here we are, another good one with our third matchup. And it's all teeing up tonight's nightcap. The host, K. Breton University Capers, the number eight seed, will try to slay the dragon, so to speak, as they face the number one ranked Carlton Ravens for that fourth and final spot in the national semifinals. Finals get it in and throw it away. That pass, out of the reach. That was trouble right from the start on the, on the inbound from Cone trying to enable the corral it, but then threw it away. It was a tough catch there for Pollyanna Story.
Woodmeyer hands it back off to McMillan. He finds Gascoigne. And for Widmeyer for three. No good. Rebound. Handed off for Cohn. Another good look for Widmeyer. Just didn't go down. Now the Dinos look to chop some more off this four point lead. Cohn recovers it after losing it in the lane. Gets a yeah. go down low. Yes, Cole gets sandwiched in there, but she's able to pick up the loose ball and a little teardrop. Cuts it to two. Gascoigne misses the jumper. Cole now tries to get things moving for the Dinos. Sit off to Landry. Cole gets it back from Story. Story now in the post. Turn around. Drains it, Pollyanna Story. Ties it at 39. Widmeyer attacking. Has to force it up. She wanted to kick to the corner, but it wasn't there. It's Proctor now. Kick, corner, three, Landry. No good, tipped out of bounds, and it will go to the Huskies. Great box out there by Beaumont. Thirty-nine apiece, late here in the third. Biggest lead has been seven. Nice spin move down low from Beaumont, but can't finish. 4G. Gets the board, but gets tied up. Yes, a great move there by Beaumont. She got everything but the hook. She snaked her way along the baseline and able to spin underneath the hoop, but just wouldn't go down for her. Story, nice feed down low. Colburn can't finish. There's your defensive player of the year in the AUS cast coin. But off the broken play, Story is having a big third quarter as the Dino crowd gets into it. Corner three, McMillan won't drop. Offensive rebound. Another big board by 4G. Over the back call here. Going against Colin. Sorry, that one actually goes against Colbert. There's that drive and pull up by Story. Nails it. Again, she's having a big third quarter. Donaldson at the line now. Her team down a pair, chance to tie it. It's a good look at Courtney Donaldson. First one cups out. Able to get one free throw to go. It's Landry. Gets it over to Pink. Proctor down low. Let it your presence known. She had the mismatch. She had McMillan pinned. Three-point Dino lead. Four G. That's a big answer for her. Nodding this game, forty-three apiece. She had a couple of big offensive rebounds since she checked in. Tough shot there for Story. Trying to foul there, off the bounce. Beaumont. 
There's the three from 4G. Dinos talk it over as Beaumont misses her first free throw. All knotted at 43 here late in the third. Looking like a, our third consecutive quarter foul that'll go down to the nitty gritty. And a tough foul there in the backcourt. 4G. Husky's not in the bonus just yet. Still have two fouls to give. Landry gets it, up top story. Over for Pink. A turn pass for Landry. Drives, gets it up off glass, won't get the roll. Donaldson now the other way. Over for Gascoigne, back up top of Millen. Using the screen from Beaumont. Gascoigne to the rim. Great possession there from the Huskies. Used every bit of that shot clock. And then wire to wire, Gascoigne's been there. Defensively and offensively. You want to say a double dribble there as it wasn't just the game possession, but she took the dribble. Palmer back in. And here's Gas going to the rack to give her team back the two point lead here with under a minute left in the third. Millen kicks out 4G for three. Off the mark. Dinos quickly the other way. Pink can't get it to go. Four second differential game clock to shot clock. Kick to the corner. Beaumont spins. Kick to Gascoigne. Can't get the long two to fall. 10 seconds to shoot for the Dinos. Time here for the Dinos to look for something. Palmer can't nail it at the buzzer. So back and forth. We'll take a break here before the start of the fourth quarter. Pardon me. You're watching the 2023 Proto Case New Sports Women's Basketball Championships presented by Bell on CBC Sports. Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca to profit of the promotion of the week of the collection Nike Team. Don't forget, you can get your official U Sports Championship gear starting on Monday. The sale begins at shopusports.ca. Again, don't forget to get your official U Sports Champions gear going on sale on Monday. Drop by shop.usports.ca. We had an exciting between 
quarter entertainment there as one lucky fan almost won $5,000 just missing the half court shot. We'll see who hits the money shots here in the fourth quarter. Not 5,000 on the line, but a trip to the national semifinals for one of these two teams. Donaldson now, will she challenge? All great defense, but she does draw the foul. Not much more Palmer could do. Great patience there by Donaldson as well. And she'll go to the free throw line. Donaldson hits her first to make it a three-point game. Good on the back half as well. Pink. the return pass and it's going to head to the line for two. Palmer who's been a presence throughout. Caitlin Power with the foul. Early in this fourth this is where Scott Monroe trying to steal some bench time. McMillan though is ready to come back in. I think you'll that's the last you'll see her on the bench the rest of the way. McMillan back, she'll check in for Donaldson. So both teams have had really good depth effort. Benches have been a factor here. It's been a well-balanced attack for both teams as well. Just one player on either side in double figures. That's Clara Gascoigne with 10. Kobayashi. Somehow, almost got that pass to Power down low. It's taken away. One of those cases, I think Kobayashi had a lane herself. She just had to turn the shoulder. And Palmer. from downtown, Palmer. At the bottom of the well to give her team a one-point lead. Kobayashi has to be careful there. She. Close to clearing out Palmer there. Widmeyer. Wow, Widmeyer. Big three of her own to answer. Just in rhythm, she got it, no hesitation, and canned another three to put her team back on top. Oh, good help there by Kobayashi. She was a little late. And they're gonna give her shots on that, which is interesting. I guess they're saying she was in the, yes, was in her motion. Good idea by Kobayashi, but both late and I think below the, inside the circle for the hat, the arc. Chance to tie things up here for the Dinos. I think we're going to have a technical foul here on the Huskies bench. Well, Scott Monroe, but it goes as a bench foul. Didn't hear what was, if he just said the wrong thing or is an accumulation. It's hard to know sometimes, but that's tough. That's hopefully a point that doesn't come back to haunt the Huskies. So we'll get the back end of the free throws there. I don't know if Scott Monroe was disputing the call or that it was a shooting foul or... I think it was a bit of both there. It was definitely a bang-bang call down low. And again, like you say, give her the act of shooting on that play. Seemed a little 
a little odd. Well, it all evened out where she, she didn't miss the technical free throw, but she did miss her second off the shooting foul. 50-50 now, folks. Here we go, seven and a half minutes remaining. Great take there from Bomber, getting right to the basket. Scott Monroe wants to have a chat. Palmer starting to cook. But yeah, that's a tough one to let her get all the way baseline from outside the arc, Donaldson. But no one there to gas going way too late to help. And a player of Palmer's caliber is, is gonna make that one and we'll let you know that coming up the 2023 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship brought to you by McKeza will take place March 17th to 19th in Vancouver, British Columbia. You can see all the action on cbcsports.ca or usports.ca. And also, don't forget the 2023 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship also brought to you by McKeza and they'll take place in Hamilton, Ontario, March 17th to 19th. And again, you can get all the action right here on cbcsports.ca or usports.ca. First things first, we have a women's basketball national championship to determine. We're just getting going here, our third quarter final of the four day tournament here in beautiful Sydney K. Breton, home of the Capers. We'll be in our final game of the day against the number one ranked Carlton Ravens. And there we have a Dino fan showing his dance moves. And we'll see if his Dinos can dance their way to a national semifinal. And that's a obvious call. I'm not sure why uh, Widmeyer's disputing it. She put the vice grip. on her opponent as she tried to battle for the rebound. Just her second personal foul. Nobody really in foul trouble on either side. Well, as you said, in a pretty clean opening half, there weren't that many total fouls, and there haven't been really here in this one, in the second half. Tough free throw line jumper won't go down. Bobby Joe Colbert. Donaldson back up there. Widmeyer off the bounce. Gets blocked. Widmeyer won the foul. Says so she's getting hit. Huskies have to focus here. And again, that what's become a vaunted baseline for both teams for his inbounding. That was much easier than usual. The line of McMillan. Donaldson. Oh, she got caught in between and missed badly there. A great change of pace to get wide open, but couldn't finish the easy one. Missed the bunny. Terpchich. Swooping in. Didn't get the roll. Dinos with the old board. And Proctor off balance, but able to Roll it over that front rim to give her side a four point lead. Donaldson now trying to answer for the Huskies. She gets it to Gascoigne. Up top, McMillan. Corner, Donaldson. Tough shot. Kind of one of those tweeners, not a three and a deep two. One that's kind of gone the way of the, the dodo bird and today's game and that was a just kind of fading couldn't get it to go down it'll go back to the dinos up four 535 remaining corner three won't fall offensive rebound pink Widmeyer couldn't get both hands on that one Turkic able to hit in the mid-range Fifth year, the seniors coming through here. The Hamilton product, Turchich. Oh, and that air pass. Donaldson Whitmire wasn't looking for it. Midway through this fourth quarter, Calgary up 
six there, matching their biggest lead of the evening. And they're gonna come looking for more here and stretch this one out. The Canada West runners up. St. Mary's the AUS champions, big steal there by Beaumont. Drops it off, McMillan steps back for three. We're gonna have a rebounding foul as Gascoigne was dumped. There's Terpcic, the veteran. This is an experienced Calgary club. Gascoigne gets squared up. She has a look, crosses over. Able to draw the foul against Proctor. She'll head to the line. Big free throws here with 4.37 remaining. Damian Jennings made some instruction to his club. Gascoigne, who's given a great performance here for her Huskies. Misses the second. Dino's up five. Left-hander misses. Donaldson trying to get free, and then she swiped and fouled. Still not in the penalty yet, so it'll be inbounds play on the baseline for the Huskies. Next one will be a shooting foul, regardless for the Huskies. Three team fouls on St. Mary's. McMillan up top, Gaspoin thought of the three, good fake. Gets to the rim, can't finish. Everything but the basket for Gascoin. Tough one there, she did everything right, but kiss it in. Huskies tough off the inbound here. Widmeyer attacking. Loves that spin move, gets it up off glass and good. Big tie play by Widmeyer. Off the spin. Huskies down three. Good fake there for Palmer in the corner and a nice feed for Proctor. That was a beautiful dish, but Proctor couldn't finish. McMillan now aggressively to the hoop. Alina McMillan, she doesn't mind the contact. Here's that drive by Widmeyer and the spin, that long stride and the kiss. McMillan now can bring her team within one. Free throws in a tight one like this are going to be big down the stretch. Still only three team fouls on St. Mary's, but now everything here on end for the Huskies will be a shooting foul. So we'll keep an eye on that. And that's where your Scott Monroe, you're saying, ladies, we're in the bonus. Get it to the basket. Landry attacking, going up against the smaller Donaldson. Great defense there. As you said, Donaldson against the bigger Landry, but stood her ground. McMillan. McMillan. Guess going. McMillan, she'll take it, and hits it, Alina McMillan. And the Huskies are up two. They said McMillan loves the spotlight. Doesn't shy away from it, five straight. There Landry again, just using her size, getting down low against Donaldson. Landry with the answer, just carves out space. Donaldson for three. Offensive rebound, Beaumont. 
Kenzie Knight with Milne, you know she's pulling. Oh, McMillan, it just rattled out. That It'll one. stay with the Huskies. That one was halfway down. You can tell McMillan's feeling it. Gascoigne. Good look there. Beaumont finding McMillan. So a big set here, tied at 58. 228 remaining. Again, a challenge for both teams to do get it in the Gascoigne. McMillan. McMillan off the bounce. Weaves her way in and draws the foul smartly. Again, her team in the penalty. And she'll head to the free throw line looking to get her sixth and seventh consecutive point here for the Huskies down the stretch. That one front rim, but she doesn't get the shooter's roll. Trying to give her team the lead here with 2.22 remaining. Hits the second. And now back to work go the Dinos. Down a point. Crowd's been treated to another dandy here at Sullivan Field House. Our third quarter final. That'll go down to the wire. Collin gets it seven to shoot. The spin in the lane. She's blocked, but they call a foul. I think they're going to get Widmeyer. Looked like... Yes, it is Widmeyer. Great work there by McMillan. It was on the help from Widmeyer. First free throw is good for Colin. Collins had a big game for Calgary. Been quiet for a while here, but now chance to put her team back in the lead. And she does. 60 to 59, under two minutes remaining. Going down to the wire here in Sydney. Beaumont, McMillan, Beaumont for three. Cans it, and the Huskies are back up a pair. Couple of big corner threes here late in stage fourth quarter. Huskies doing a good job, we said early, they were struggling, but really turned it up here in the second half. Tough one there, but it is a foul on McMillan. And that'll put... No, actually, that's still only their fourth, or is it the fifth? No, it is the fifth. So both teams now in bonus. Colin back to the line, trying to tie for her team. Drains the first. Ice water in this sophomore's veins from Ramuski, Quebec. This is the second. Great box out by Gascoigne. Oh, and she and ball possession so important there. And she and McMillan get crossed up. So a big chance here for the Dinos. There's Damian Jennings calling what he wants run here in the closing moments. Proctor. Palmer gets it over to Landry. They try to find Proctor down oh, low. That's a tough angle there for Proctor, especially with no need a little air under it. But kind of went on a line, no chance there. Gascoigne defending. Big trip here. Woodmeyer. Gascoigne. Nice handoff for Donaldson. What I love about the Huskies in these, along with the threes, of course, but they come off taking it to the hoop, is they remain aggressive knowing they're in the penalty. So even, you don't have to make the pass, you just have to get fouled. And the more you drive, the more ball move it, the more chance you're gonna head to that free throw line where Donaldson's been good. Hits another. Damian Jennings takes a timeout. 106 remaining down the stretch. St. Mary 64, the Dino 61. 
three great games to open the weekend here. All tightly contested. As we said, we had the opener, a win by Queens over the Citadel in overtime. Really, our second game wasn't decided until eight seconds remaining when the Pandas took an eight, four point lead on Acadia. And this one now with over a minute remaining, looks like it's going to go down the final seconds as well. There you see Scott Monroe, the veteran head coach of the Huskies. Damian Jennings, his counterpart in his 11th season. So both teams, and you're looking ahead as well. If this happens, A, or if A happens, if B happens, if C happens, so many scenarios. Huskies have two timeouts left. Dinos with one. Certainly no pressure here as far as three point shooting. That really has been part of the dino repertoire here this evening. Certainly been a difference maker for the Huskies who started slowly, but here in the second half have started to cook. They feed Proctor, De Lo goes up, gets two. Great, great stability there by Proctor. She got bumped by Donaldson, but kept her balance and softly put it home. One point game, Widmeyer. Widmeyer has to be careful there. You don't want to get caught baseline. Beaumont got her own miss. McMillan, Donaldson. Dinos don't have to foul. Five to shoot for the Huskies. Big take there by Widmeyer. Wow, Widmeyer. Just before the shot clock expired. As you said, a couple of previous possessions, such great patience by the Huskies with the shot clock. Donaldson, here's Widmeyer. She's a threat to shoot the three, so you have to come out. And that's what Landry did, but Widmeyer drives into the paint and gives her team a big three-point lead here late in the fourth quarter. Still enough time left for the Donalds don't necessarily have to go for the three. Having no timeouts remaining obviously hurts them here in late stages. St. Mary's with two timeouts of their own. Here's Widmeyer again from under the basket. Glides in the kiss. And confident. Kind of like a football touchdown where the, the player says, I've been here before. I don't need to do too much celebrating. And she knows it's far from over here at Sullivan Fieldhouse. Three-point Husky lead. Again, the winner goes to semifinal Saturday. The loser will be back in action tomorrow in the consolation round. Be interesting the Dinos now. They may see something off the off a drive and kick, but I got a feeling it's not three-pointer or bust here by any means. They've been so good inside. Can they get it in? They can. And they did Second violation. Wow. We've had probably so many in this game, 4.99 seconds before the team got it in. And this late in the game, that was the first one. But it definitely, I don't think you can dispute it because St. Mary's and they're going to lengthen the game here. Donaldson. This is where free throw shooting, while you take them at the end of most practices and you put that work in all season. I don't know if Damian Jennings wanted to foul that quickly. But that's the end of the day for Colin who's had a great game for the Dinos. Terpchich is back. Donaldson at the line, misses the first. So that makes it interesting here in the home stretch. Donaldson, this is a big one to make it a two possession game and she gets it to 
slip over the front of the rim. Got to go quickly for the Dinos. Doesn't have to be a three, but if one presents itself. But they do need something fast, and there it is. Great work by Proctor to make it 67-65. Still plenty of time. But again, it's going to have to be the Huskies from the free throw line. Interesting Coach Monroe not choosing to call timeout here, letting his team play. They get it in. McMillan. And there, Terpchich put the death lock on her to get the foul. McMillan. McMillan doesn't look too anxious about going to the line. She's rearing the goal. Again, two make it a two possession game, which is what the Huskies are looking for. McMillan hits. Now this is the one. If you're a St. Mary's fan, Dinos fans are putting any sort of whatever magic you can on this shot. McMillan hits it. Puts her team up four with 16 seconds remaining. Probably need a three on this possession if you're the Dinos. Just not enough time remaining to keep getting twos. Great defense there again by the Huskies, and that's one of the signatures of this club as their fans get into it. They can taste it now. 8.7 seconds remaining. Up four with Beaumont heading to the line. You saw that last free throw from McMillan gave a little, blew a little kiss to the Dino faithful as they were beating their drums trying to distract her. And there's the first for Beaumont. Up five, 8.7 seconds remaining. This would take, as within the other game still, you need a three and a deuce just to tie it. And again, not a three-point shooting Calgary team. But there's one from downtown. They need a foul. And now a point one. Likely to see them add a little bit of time out I of that clock. So. As I just said, not a three-point shooting team, but Pollyanna Story. Tries to write a chapter in Dino lore here, bringing her team and within two. Doesn't look like they are going to add any time to the clock. So I don't think there's anything, however you want to describe, mathematically or time-wise and that they can't even score. And the Huskies, another nail-biter, Alex. The fourth seeded Huskies will Great go game. to semifinal Saturday, and it was a dandy. Both sides gave it their all. Great play inside and outside. And the Huskies, I think the key, their three-point shooting came alive in the second half, one of their signatures. A great all-around team effort by both sides. Another one of those. There has to be a loser, but tough one for the Dinos. Full marks to them. They can the West runners up. They'll head to the consolation round tomorrow evening to face either Carlton or CBU. And the St. Mary's Huskies, they'll wait the winner of that matchup on semifinal Saturday night here at Sullivan Fieldhouse. Wouldn't that be something if we get an all AUS semifinal? Semifinal, that's still in the in the works as you see Donaldson having to chat there with Colburn. So good. You see that these teams after a hard fought game still sharing hugs and handshakes in a moment here as we get ready to honor the Nike players of the game. Tough choice on both sides. This one, Alex. The other games we kind of had. We had pretty easy picks for last time. Sure, we were pretty much on on target. I think I'm four for four so far. So we're gonna go with Story and Widmeyer. Those are my predictions. I'll go Gascoigne and Story. No, oh, well, we're we're. Eh. That, that was a good pick too. Yeah. The fam <laughs> we got the Family Feud X. Eh. And deserved there by Collins. She played, like I say, with nobody being chosen here. 
is an incorrect choice, especially from this game. So much, yeah, so many contributors. Well balanced attack by both teams. We got one right. You got one right, Alex. I was thinking gas going with the wire to wire effort, but again, wow, Widmeyer. Yeah, How could you not go it. along with that choice as well? So the Nike player, there's the players of the game. Amelie Collin for the Dinos. Sophia Widmeyer for the winning Huskies. We'll look at our bracket now. After our third quarter final, there you see St. Mary's, they punched their ticket to semifinal Saturday here at Sullivan Fieldhouse. The first semifinal will be Alberta and Queens. St. Mary's will await the winner of our next game, CBU, the host team and Carlton. And the Dinos move on to tomorrow's consolation round along with Acadia and UQAM. So we're gonna step away here between games. Coming up our nightcap, the number eight CBU Capers and the number one Carlton Ravens. Don't go too far, go grab a snack, maybe a beer, whatever you like. You've been watching the 2023 Proto Case U Sports Women's Basketball Championships presented by Bell on CBC Sports. U Sports on CBC, Les Championnats U Sport, brought to you in part by, vous êtes présenté par, Nike Team, Just Do It, Fettler, Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings, le fournisseur exclusive des bagues de Championnats U Sport, Fox 40, celebrating a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program, fier partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport depuis 10 ans, by Veraburn, proud medical supplier to university sports since 1979, fier partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1979, the Government of Canada, le gouvernement du Canada, by Bell, proud presenting partner of the 2023 Protocase U Sports Women's Basketball Final 8, fier partenaire de l'Ultime 8 U Sport 2023, and by Protocase. Proud title partner of the 2023 Protocase U Sports Women's Basketball Final 8. Le partenaire en titre de l'Ultime 8 U Sport 2023.